This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today we are here at a grocery store and we had an alarm on the ice cream cases. And we get here and just judging from what I was seeing, that problem they said was airflow, no airflow. So the fans literally suck it in, blow it through the back, through the back wall, out and through the air bands here and it drops down. These are electric defrost. Uh, you can see that we've got some issues here. Looks to me like that one there is partially unplugged. We gotta check that with the amp meter yet. Chances are we're gonna have to melt this with water because it'll take forever. And obviously this isn't gonna get it. These cases are all old. Most of my stores are really old. Now this case over here was perfectly fine. They decided not to pull that one. I left that on them. I had them pull this here. Heat will build up. I told them it's a possibility it might get warm over there, but you roll the dice on your own product. I told the store manager and they made that decision not to pull it. So hand valve is open there. A lot of freezing up going on behind the TXV. You may possibly check screen. Most of these stores got dirty systems and screens get plugged up quite often. But from what I'm seeing here, like I said, the defrost looks like it's an issue. And we also got a door here that sprung. Somebody opened it too far and bent the bracket so the door won't shut. So we gotta fix that, which would be nothing more than a hammer and a chisel. Yep, no amp at all. So that's, that's a problem. Uh, that right there, unfortunately, is completely froze. So we're gonna have to get that water. Now what the bad is, this is the one that actually had the alarm. So we're gonna go ahead and deal with the first one here. This is circuit 31. This is circuit 32. Check the alarm. So this one here might end up having to be pulled next. As you can see, a lot of times people leave doors open and you'll see a lot of crap. Frosting up on stuff, things like that. So we're gonna deal with that one piece at a time. You can get well overwhelmed because as you're here, you're gonna get asked to look at the meat department, you're gonna look at deli and everything else. So right here is our hose connection which is better than some, so you can actually run that hose all the way across the top. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna do when we get this water rolling is we're gonna make darn sure that drain works. Last thing you want is a big buildup of water in there and no place for it to drain. So we have one 50-foot hose and then this rubber hose, which is one of my Craftsman hoses, which is rubber, probably one of the best hoses out there. So we wanna make darn sure we got good O-rings, otherwise you leak water on the floor. You wanna keep your hose out of the way, otherwise, you got trip hazards, which then means you got liabilities, which means then you lose money. And forget the voice, went to AHR, picked up a nice cold uh, over it, but it uh, definitely was a real nice parting gift. I'm still yet to figure out why you'd have it in Chicago in the middle of winter, uh, instead of somewhere nice and warm, but whatever. Now, one of the things you gotta watch out for, these people that love to put these stupid little tags in here, this crap gets into your uh, drains and we'll plug it up. Now, for those that are wondering why, why are we using water? Water is one of the fastest means because it has the most contact with the ice. And even though I'm not gonna show you how to melt ice, I am gonna show you some of the points that you wanna go after first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this water, uh, wire here thawed out so that I can actually unhook or rehook the thing up. Once we get that done, we're gonna check and make sure all the heaters are working, if all the heaters are working. Then I think majority of it, if you look here, you can see that a lot of the ice is built up over there. I had one motor here that was bad. Yeah, you've got some real hodgepodge stuff going on here that happens, unfortunately. That's nice, where's this coming from? Uh, see what I'm saying? It's always something. All right, we got our cone there. We'll deal with that in a little bit. This here pulled right apart. Trying not to sink our whole hand in there. As you can see, that is really flipping tight. Really bad, bad setup. It just barely reaches it. That is really a bad setup. I don't think I can pull it any further this direction. We got it, but this is this is just ignorant. Okay, I got three amps. It's working. So the heater's good. That's a good thing. Like I said, that's just crap. Okay, 
As you can see, most of that ice is superficial and it's towards the front, which is a good sign. So we'll go ahead and get this thing melted out. And the big thing is, is making sure you've got it all the way in that very, very back corner. If you don't get it all the way out of that very back corner, that'll cut the airflow off and it will come right back again within a short period of time. And you'll be back doing this crap all over again and this is not something we really enjoy doing. So you gotta make sure you get it really, really good and not just what you can see. You need to get to the behind there where you can't see, which a lot of times I'll use my camera to get in there to get to it. And that way I know I've got the air band behind there. Cause like I said, this thing's gonna blow straight through the coil to the back, all the way into that back wall there, that metal part. And it's only sometimes an inch or two back here. And there's not a lot to work with. Water's trailing out on the floor. That's fantastic. All right, so we got it pulled out. And as you can see, the drain line there goes across and all the way down there. That's where it's leaking at is right about right in there area. You can see everything down here is very old. It's from like the 70s. Everything's just, if not 80s, I mean, either way, it's like 30 plus years. Oh yeah, see, there you go, that's the problem. They got a plugged, plug drain right there. All right, so I'm reaching down there. I've already pulled out one of those stinking plastic things. Kind of just dig, dig this crap out. When I reach up to the bottom of this, I can feel stuff in the pipe itself. Yeah, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, that plant floor drain has got a grill in there and I cannot remove it. So let's see if it'll handle the water now. Got water running and it appears it's staying down. So that's good. Let's get busy again. All right, so I got them cleaning that up, hopefully, which makes it a little easier. So right here is your terminations. You can see one of them's not even strapped to nothing. The other one's hooked on there. <clears throat> it's hard to say whether or not which one's which, but sometimes one's for the electronic side of things, one's for the hard wire. But we're going to try to melt that last. That way these heaters continue to run, helping me out while I'm doing the water. Notice some yellow here on some of the snow. <clears throat> that could have been from a leak, most likely. So we're gonna check out the leak detector. We're gonna check these other defrost heaters before we get it too warm, which it may already be triggered, triggered out. That one's working, it's at three amps. That's good. Three amps, good. Got this one here. You can get right around the metal piece and it will give you amber all. See, three. And this last one down here, the loopy dupes already on it. That's a three also. So they're all working. It's hard to tell, but since the heater element looks like it goes completely underneath the coil to the back, it may actually get it pretty good back there for me. Hot gas defrost don't have that, and a lot of times that's what I'm defrosting is those type of coils where you use the compressor hot gas to reverse flow through the suction, come out about right here before the TXV comes out, and then it returns on the liquid line back to the rack, and then is reused throughout the rest of the system. We'll look at the rack here in just a little bit. All right, so that one was wire tied on there and it just came undone. So I don't have the metal clip like these have got there uh, and there. That's the high limit limit. The rest of them are the terminations for electronically. So in theory, it should kick out the contactor. Yeah, this one right here. The uh, bearings, you can see it's, yeah, there. There it was fun, a couple times it didn't. So, one and done with the way I look at it. See how that one does a lot better. And of course the blade's all whacked out too, go figure. Okay, so what we ended up doing was just crimping the short piece onto there, that way it's not live. Got it on there. I have heat shrink, but my heat shrink don't go that small. So in theory, 
it's not going to really matter much because half of this wire is in the water anyway. All right, so we got it all taped up. Went ahead and put a couple of loops around the plug too so it doesn't come unplugged. If any water gets in there, it can uh, pull it apart. Came out of defrost, went ahead and closed my hand valve there. Otherwise, the fans are gonna be coming on. These fan blades are whacked out. Had to take off those wire nuts, which is really comforting. Got the new motor here. It didn't have a plug on it anyway, so it works out good. Universal bracketing to get stick them out on the sides or on the back. We got a new clip. Like I said, the motor fan blade will work. It's just not perfect. All right, so we got it in place. Everything's pulled up. Blade turns. Looks like it should work pretty good. Um, you see those blades there? Cup like that. So it will work. Got to tape back up. So I um, need to get the camera back here real quick and uh, make sure the rotation's right. I mean, it says clockwise, but some do it by lead in, some do it by shaft in. Here's my camera I've got, which it's got side camera and front camera both. So we'll just slide that back here. I did notice I missed a little spot here, but let's see if we got everything in the back. All right, so we're looking at the very back. I see a couple spots here where there's like a little bit like the very top of the coil. Uh, for the most part, it looks pretty dang clear. I mean, you want to get all of it out of there. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a bead of water underneath here to try to get any last residuals, but we pretty much got it. I checked here and over there. Got to check down there yet. But that's what I'm talking about. The camera I'm thinking about getting from True Tech Tools has got a uh, tip that will bend 180 which I think might be a little bit better than dinking around with the side camera because it's very hard to get this thing lined up to actually see what's going on. But you can see the silver there. That is going straight down through the top of the coil. It looks like we're clear. Yeah, well, it ain't gonna be you having to come back if it ain't right, so I think we're good. I'm gonna make sure these wires don't get tore apart when you lay this back down. This is one of them things where it kind of kind of a pain. Yeah, you can see some of these blades are just jacked to the maximus here. You can see that thing there's tweaked, twonked, and everything else there. You probably just gotta do your best. You can tell the blades have been reversed just to make things work. Where we're at right now is nowhere near any supply houses. We gotta keep stuff on the truck, and you keep these stupid fan blades on your truck for 20 years and you never use one. And then, uh, take one off your truck and then you freaking need 10 of them everything down there is running like i said this one here stayed off because i shut the uh oh yeah that cap was loose jeez all right um one good thing to do right now while we got it is go ahead and do a quick leak search real quick just make sure there's no leaks uh right now is the perfect time to do it everything's warmed up okay let's go ahead and open this up get some flow there she goes. Notice that bulb wasn't flat because it was on the curve a little bit. It was only off by a little bit. That's enough to throw your superheat off. So went ahead and readjusted that. A lot of times those will leak there because they clean them and they end up not getting tight or don't tighten up or whatever. And I'm not gonna say you're gonna get a really great detection here, but I'm just saying, now's the time to do it. I've been able to pick it up in the air band if it's worthwhile fixing it type leak. This door here, the deal is, is you can't make it stay shut. It literally pushes out. It's because of that door caught catch right there. Somebody hammered it hard and caused some issues. Let's see if we can smack it down. All right, all fans came on, including the new one. It's not blowing out at me, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get these bottoms in. I see a little something red right there. Tuck that in a little bit. You can stop these by going right to the center. Like that, see that wire nut? out of the way so we're good to go probably one of the worst things about grocery stores is 
all the food in the way and all the crap you got to take apart to get into it. So this literally goes in there. What I usually do is I'll take one shelf completely out. That way I can shove most of the stuff down. All right, just a little persuasion here. I was able to bend that down, yet still when it opens up, it still hits and catches. So when the people aren't paying attention and they try to open the whole door and it will shut. I mean, obviously the spring on it sucks, but it does shut. Now uh, I need to go back and check the control see what's going on with these things over here and then i've got something in the meat department and then i got another store i gotta go to so we have one rack over there and then we also got lines of going over here and going here this is one of our racks this is the nicer of the group here at this store so you got control boards up here which were forced to work with the emerson which sucks because some of the numbers are off but Anyhow, then I had some buttons here that ain't wanting to work. I said something about that that hasn't gotten fixed yet. So first thing I did when I got here is I wanted to make sure that my defrost was working. So these are 31 and 32 cases. So I went through and made sure that they were closing. You see where oil was at before. I fixed the rep and repaired the oil distribution line, which goes to these pots. We're out of alarms. We go up here. <coughs> 32, which is what we were working on. They only had two temperature sensors. So this one here is seven and 12. And combined together, average nine. Set points, negative 15, but in reality, there's no solenoids on this thing. So it just runs off the EPR valve. Well, sort valve, as you want to call it. So you regulate your suction pressure and that keeps your saturation temperature where you want it at so you can keep a constant temperature. That way you're not cycling compressors on and off for no good reason. That's the most accurate way of doing it. Over here's your medium rack. Here's your low rack. This one here can combine them together, but it's closed. Sight glass, filter dryer, pop-off valve that you've seen the other day that I was working on in that old factory. That's just the way it is on bigger systems. These go up here and they distribute out throughout the store. We've got 31 and 32. And here's 32. That's the other one that was the alarm in earlier. That one should come down to temperature pretty quick here. One hour delay after defrost, which means it ain't gonna delay, for, it's not gonna go into alarm. <clears throat> and even then, 15 degrees is trigger point. So it's already below that, so it's not gonna go into alarm. So it should clear out here and be good to go. So now we need to look at our alarms again. So this morning when I got here, 32 was doing this deal. If you come down here, you can see 32. Short of that, we don't have anything else on 32. So 32 is a newbie. 32, like I said, is this next set of cases. So let's go into 32 and see what our sensors are and see which one's acting stupid. So we go back in here, we go under circuits. I like going this way. Down don't work, so like I said, page down, go back up now, go to 32, hit enter. So we got two cases, a negative 19 and 18, the other one's at 11. What we need to do is check and see if that temperature sensor is accurate. By hitting the tab key, I was able to bounce around. So there's 19, now I can hit enter, I can graph that turkey. You see things got stupid recently. Let's go see if we can see what kind of temperature it actually is. So we're going to go back in. All right, so I just went through and marked these stupid things so it'd be easier. I'm big into doing markings. Now, that's a newer sensor right there. You can see it's a um, ew. Why are we pulled? We have no airflow. Great. So we got problems. So they luckily already got half of it pulled. Let's see if we can get in here. I'll bet you a dollar. 
man or toils grows up. So we can do everything we just did all over again. Hands running, coils froze. Ah. Guess what? Pull the whole case. Because that's that's a flipping mess. Alright, so each one of these is a case. So from there to here's a case. From there to that silver thing, that's another case. And the third one down there's another case. I mean it's got its own evaporator. So these all here feel like they've got good airflow. So we're not gonna mess with these. If they were cut off, they would have poor airflow. They were doing something on the uh, Advanced Refrigeration Podcast about these little things. Something about them causes it to do that. I don't remember what exactly it was, but yeah. So anyhow, that's what we're up to now. So as soon as they pull that bottom row, they're not going to pull the top of it. And then uh, we'll melt it out again and we'll see if the heaters are working. He said it was just out of that. That's the reason why they don't have any there. So, all right. So we went ahead and put the little bottom rows up there. A lot of times I get these things out of order, which I know, who cares, they gotta deal with it. But the problem is it takes them longer to put it back together, which means they ice up the new coil that I just thawed out. So I try to make it as easy on them as possible. And most of these people have been here for a long time. Making friends with them is always a good thing. So like we said, 32 is what we're gonna do. So back to circuits. Can't scroll down, so let's hit page down. Gets me to the bottom, go back up to 32, hit enter. There's the case, hit enter, manual defrost. Okay, now we can hit <clears throat> the next key. The defrost, I go ahead and go emergency defrost. Don't know what the difference is, but that's what it does. We're now in defrost. You can see that temperature sensor one is at 36. The other ones are at 17 below. Go over here, should see a 32 heater come on. Maybe there's a delay there, but it should come on. I did earlier. Fans off, defrost on. Why is it not doing anything? <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Now it is. Maybe it wasn't, or I just didn't see it. You can see it is now, so. Yep, it's on. Here's the water heater. That's free heat, reheat. So what it'll do, it'll divert the flow. So you can either go hot gas. You see it coming out of the oil separator, comes up. It either can go to the hot water heater and then return, so it'll supply out, come back, then go over to the outside unit, and then it can go either a full coil or a whole coil. So that's the whole condenser, that's half the condenser. So it'll switch to keep head pressure up. And then what I'm saying here is, is it'll uh, let it go to the water heater first, so you're getting free hot water, which it is running and it's hot. And it's coming out fairly hot and going in definitely hot. All right, so just taking a look. It's all iced up. Remember what I said about that drain? Well, I don't see a drain heater uh, or a drain. So it's probably the problem is probably the drains froze up. All right, so back down here we go again. And you can see you got galvanized and you can see that we got ice down there, which is a really bad thing because that means that line's probably frozen an inch or two down in there. There's a drain heater. It's broke off. So we're gonna keep on blasting water down in here so we can go through. All right, so I went to go grab my nitrogen here, but I found a nice little plunger and was able to suck out some of that crap, which is these damn tags that they freaking leave in there. And that's what it was. And you know, those wires are alive, but you're not seeing me get shocked. But we're uh, just breaking that crap up and if we can flush it through, great. Yep, there goes the crap. Don't really like seeing it go back down, but I mean, the plastic pieces, if we can get the big ones, great. Look at that. That is, there's nothing that brings more joy to your heart than seeing that sucker start to drain like it started to and then stop. With that velocity they got going on right now, it may actually be pulling them on through the drain. But you're better off to get it completely out of there if you can, which is what I'm doing. And then the big thing I always do, I don't think many people do, is they don't flush all the crap out that's in the case. Get it out while you got a nice flow. She's draining up pretty good. 
Yeah, wow. And it's going all over the floor. Great. Fantastic. Oh, yes. All right. It was plugged up again. So we got a bunch of those plastic things you can see there dug out of the grill. There was a grill there, and it was all plugged up. Yep. Um, you can see the heaters are working. The ones that I checked that I could check are, are working just fine. Came back out here to the truck, got my uh, heat shrink, and got some 120 volt heat tape here. Went ahead and cut her off. Heat shrink, heat shrink. This is what we usually use. Buck connector, put some 14 gauge or 16 gauge on there. This thing doesn't pull squat. Anyhow, gonna go back in there, get it uh, hooked on there with the fans, shove it down there as best I can, and uh, get this thing back up and going. Now, I do have a another heater stick here. This one here is 110 volts and uh, 120 volts, 30 watt stick. But usually it needs something to shove it down flat, and with the way that froze down in the uh, drain i'm a little bit worried that this wouldn't work uh that case is i think saturated with moisture and that transfers the cold right onto the outside and would cause it to freeze up so that's uh another drain here that we would stock that we would have we were able to unplug that fan because that was live it kind of hurt so let's see if we can drive this thing in there I ain't sure which way it's going yeah it's going towards me there we go yep good oh yeah look at that Beautiful. So there's what we got there. Now I can just plug that right into that. And that's why I left that a little bit extra long. It should all flop down and all be happy, happy. I'm gonna put some tape on some of those um, plugs. So we just checked the last of them. That one came in at two and a half and uh, got them all taped so they won't come undone. So we should be able to kick this thing out. I can't believe it's still in defrost. It must have went into a natural defrost. <laughs> yep, see, you gotta make sure of that. See, there's one wire there. It's gonna get in the way. The rest of them are fine. Okay, we got that opened. All these turn. I don't see any wires in those. 32, it's in defrost. Let's enter. Let's go into setup, look at the defrost times. Two o'clock, it's uh, 227. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel that out. We're gonna back up one, hit enter. We're gonna have to log in and hit enter. We're gonna go down to manual defrost seven. We're gonna scroll over to end manual mode, hit enter. It's gonna drip. Well, it finally kicked on. We're already at 18 on the furthest case. 57 is the one I was on. Now that one's dangling. So I'm gonna go in there and see if those fans came on yet. All right, so the first one we did here, it's coming in at 17 according to the controller. I've got 12. So we might be a little restricted on that TXV or the TXV's not feeding right. Then everything down here looked really good except for the very end one, which I still had a little bit of ice in this very last spot here. So I've got to melt that crap out of there. All right, so what I ended up doing down here, cause I wasn't gonna go through this crap again, ended up drilling holes in the back wall, took my camera down to the top. So just an itty bitty hole, that'll be completely covered by product. Checked all of them across. So while I was doing that, I ended up checking my thermometer. Currently right now we're at negative five. So we might actually golden. Now, look at it. Negative seven, negative 11, negative five. It took a while, but it came down. Yeah, you can see she just So product was warm, it just took a while. All right guys, so that wraps that one up. Everything was working good. I went through everything with the manager, made sure that, uh, that uh, everything was at temperature. The uh, meat cases, uh, something about either it was too warm or too cold, but he said we could get that on the next trip. It was uh, not critical. The guy never came and talked to me, so he wasn't sure about it, and they were gone. So other than getting locked out and had to walk around the building, uh, everything else went pretty good. So uh, everything is running, like I said, at temperature. <clears throat> That's just a easy day, but time-consuming and a lot of wear and tear. You're just tired at the end of the day because you're constantly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
and uh, nothing's easily adjusted on that rack. You know, everything's got to be done back at the sort valve. So all the temperatures on the display is totally false. I mean, it's just a gives it a reference point and you tell it, hey, if it goes so many degrees above or below it, that way it alarms. And so that, that way you can keep eye, an eye on it. But short of that, it pretty much just stays consistent temperature based off suction saturated temperature. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.